Hey guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on Fortran programming. Now, in the last uh, tutorial, we were looking at uh, functions and uh, how to, you know, uh, run functions recursively and how to call one function inside the other and all. Now, in this tutorial, we will be looking at the another most important concept in Fortran called as subroutines. Now, what does a subroutine does is that it's a slightly diff it's very much different from a function. The definition of it is very much similar to functions, but uh, th these are the differences. See, a function can uh, return only one value. It can it can take multiple values inside, but can return only one value. Whereas a, a subroutine, on the other hand can access multiple values and change multiple values simultaneously okay it can a function a subroutine cannot return a value but rather it modifies the value and in the, uh, when when uh, called inside a program okay this becomes very much advantageous if you were to access a large number of programs let's say then this becomes uh, very easy second uh, second of all subroutines need not have any uh, parameters passed into them whereas functions definitely need at least one parameter to be passed into them and uh, subroutines are more versatile in the sense they can handle a large number of data uh, in, the, in the sense they can handle a large more larger large number of complexities and all and uh, which we uh, all, and all of this we'll see this about uh, we'll see this in a minute now what i have here is that i have a function I have a program called as sub underscore ex dot f95 and the program is sub underscore ex with an implicit none. It's ending here. Let's start writing some values. Now here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, you know, this time I'm not going, not at all going to use any var var variables. I'm going to use just printing statements and all. I'm just going to gi gi give a demo of you guys as to how subroutines work uh, by passing controls and all. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to print here, okay we are inside program we are inside main program we are inside main program okay now now if i were to print this again what i do i just change it changing the changes as uh, calling subroutine let's say what shall we what shall we name it subroutine a calling subroutine a and then what we call, what we do is that we write call a now this is how you call a subroutine okay and now what we do is that we print the, print the statement okay we will say here that we are back to the main program and exiting all right so fair enough now let's define subroutine here now to do to, to define a subroutine what we need we don't need the data type and all all we need is the keyword subroutine subroutine followed by the name the sub uh, the name of this subroutine is a so let me give this name and end sub routine subroutine a now as you guys notice the previous tutorials and all where, where the case, pro, I mean, Fortran is case insensitive, so even if you write small a here, it doesn't really matter. It'll just, it's, it'll just be the same. Okay, let's writing implicit none. For, the, for this program, implicit none, and for this program and this subroutine, implicit none is not all necessary, but just as a practice. Now, what we'll do is that we'll just copy all this content over here and paste this. Now we now let's see, now you're going to write this as we are inside uh, subroutine A. Okay. Now calling subroutine B, calling B call B. We are back to we are back to subroutine A. Fine. Now, what I can do is that to make sure, uh, to just to give you guys a feel that uh, you can write subroutines in multiple files and call them just like that, okay, I just create a new file and save this, uh, let me say uh, subs 
dot f95 okay now what I do is that just to make this things easy I'll just copy all this okay I'll just write uh, set of subroutines for demo okay now if I were to paste this now I call this as subroutine B I'll write this as subroutine B so I'll write this as subroutine C I'm calling subroutine C here and I'm calling subroutine now we are back in subroutine B and we end this as subroutine B okay finally let's let's make the subroutine C let's make this is subroutine C subroutine D and that will be the final calling subroutine D and calling subroutine uh, C again and we end this as subroutine D and we finally print this here finally we will print this and we'll delete this we don't need this anymore uh, let me name this as D let D be the final subroutine call okay now we are inside subroutine D we are inside subroutine D we are going back going back to the uh, let's see called subroutine sub called subroutine now we'll save this now we'll save this now let's run these two together now for that what I do I just create a shell file okay shell script shell script let's I name this as subs dot uh, sh now I first of all I clear all the files I list them all and then what I do is that I'll type g for tran minus c and then I list all the I compare all the f95 files and then I list them all yeah before that uh, I'll, I'll just remove all the dot o files star dot uh, mod files star dot exe files if there are any and I list list them all okay clear them list them all delete all the stuff list them all compile everything list them all and then I type g for tran uh, star dot o minus c sorry star dot o minus o and then I give uh, subs dot exe and list it and then I run subs dot exe alright that being said that being said let me go to the terminal okay before that I'll get explain you guys how this function works now the uh, when comparing all the files now the program the program will start now here when we click call when, we, when this command goes to call a this subroutine a is, gets called and this it will print this statement this statement and when it prints b and we'll call b and then we'll go to call we'll go to subroutine b where this statement this statement prints, gets printed and we'll go to call c there this statement this statement gets printed and then goes to call d in call d this statement and this statement prints and after this call d there's nothing to uh, to be done in subroutine d so it comes back over here and it prints we are back to subroutine c and after the subroutine c is over we'll come back to subroutine b there we print this statement we are back to subroutine b and after that subroutine b is also over we'll come back to subroutine a and then we'll print that uh, we'll print this statement we are back to subroutine a and then afterwards nothing is left so it will go back here to the main program there this statement uh, print we are back to the main program and exiting print gets displayed on the screen and the program terminates now that's how the you know uh, control or ch change of control happens and how that's how the program gets executed over here okay uh, the fact is if you had to use mix and match uh, if you had to call one subroutine to other other subroutine to other if you don't follow a pr proper pattern you might be infinitely and recursively calling one function one subroutine inside other and other and all it may just your program might hang or ultimately freeze up without uh, coming to a termination so we you just have to be careful with that and besides if that kind of case happens you have to ca cancel the execution manually and interrupt the execution manually and stop it and correct all the issues 
okay now that being said let's give this a test run okay now as usual the if i were to list the file the sh file is still in blue sorry in white in white let's give this full permissions chmod 777 subs the uh, subs.sh now this is ready bash subs.sh yeah perfect it prints all it prints all it's true okay first uh, it just lists it clears everything uh, clears everything list all the files that are available it removes it removes all the o files dot mod files dot exe files there aren't any here so it'd be getting a warning but error but no problem and then list the files it's compiled everything and it's printing it's printing all the object files uh, now it's uh, compiled that and it's printing all the uh, it's print it has uh, displayed all the files including the executable now the executable is executable is done i mean executable has been uh, invoked so it says we are in the program now it calls subroutine a and then it shows we are in subroutine a and then call subroutine b and it goes into subroutine b and prints we are in subroutine b and then calls subroutine c and then it goes to call subroutine c and then it prints call subroutine calls subroutine d like this and uh, we go inside subroutine d and then going back to we'll print the statement saying that we'll go back to the called subroutine okay then we are in subroutine c b a and we are back in the main program and the program terminates as simple as that cool now this is how this is the advantage of subroutine if you guys notice in these subroutines we did not pass any variables and all and if you guys notice these can be part or part and parcel of a program itself okay now uh, just to just to make sure that whether this execution runs properly okay now uh, we know that if we were to in programs we were to copy this and uh, paste it at the bottom also it will work because these subroutines are kind of uh, defined outside the program outside the program scripting program typing uh, code and all so what i do is that uh, but we notice that uh, when, when a function is written when function definition is made inside the program it did not work so let's give this a try why don't we just write the subroutine okay i'll just save this here i'll write the subroutine and then i print it here and to make sure to indicate to the compiler we have a subroutine we write the keyword contains okay now let's clear all this up we run this yeah we're getting the same issue the object files are getting compiled but uh, object files are getting compiled but uh, the subroutine b is not being accessible it's not being accessible and this subroutine b uh, you can you okay, I mean it's not being possible to access because it's a, it becomes a part of a part inside the program okay now that being said we, we are proving again that whenever a subroutine or a function becomes a part of a program part of the program script it becomes completely local to that program and you cannot access it by other subroutines and functions and all okay now what i do is that i just cut this all up okay i comment this okay i paste it here i paste it here now if i were to run this again yeah we, we are perfect we're getting all the answers no problem now since the subroutine d uh, subroutine d is the last program to be called let's see all this time what happens is that we have been trying to access a function that uh, the external programs are trying to call a program i mean external uh, subroutines are trying to call a subroutine uh, that is a part of the program now this time what we'll do we'll define a sub we'll now we'll make the subroutine the uh, we'll make the the uh, you know let's see how this works i think it should work the same all this time you know sometimes this subroutine that's inside it's it, it is uh, trying to call the subroutine that are outside okay L and we we, pro we checked it that this this cannot it's not possible now let's see whether the let's see whether uh, this can do the same well this prog when the out uh, functions from the uh, functions of subroutine outside can call it we can write the bash command again it does not work fine now what i do is that for a final test final test i save this i cut this up 
and I paste it here paste it here and uh, I remove this subroutine here and I put it here put it here okay now if I were to run the bash script again it works now how about that now how about that now this is something a little interesting the running the uh, running works but it becomes a little different now I'll explain you guys what exactly happened see though if a subroutine or function is defined within the program okay it has features and access to access the external subroutines but but whenever a subroutine is defined outside the program such as these such as these and all they cannot access the subroutines or functions that are uh, inherent to the program now what what it, this means is that a can access any one of these subroutines uh, external subroutines but none of these external subroutines can access a so it's kind of a one way sort of a thing a has full rights to access its own sub its own uh, well, common subroutines like if there suppose if there's another subroutine at the bottom it it can also access that but it can also access that but if you were to uh, uh, but it can also access the subroutines outside but uh, subroutines that are outside can access all the other subroutines that are outside uh, including the subroutine that can be defined at the bottom here after the program but they cannot access the subroutines or functions that are that are inherent to the program definition this is something you have to uh, completely keep in mind I thought of telling this and trying to experiment that in the uh, functions but anyway sub if this works for subroutine this will exactly work for functions also in a similar manner so there's nothing to worry about now this is how now this is how one of the important differences of defining uh, defining a function or a subroutine inside another program and stuff okay do uh, do keep this guys and do uh, do keep these in, into consideration guys okay and uh, this kind of subroutine or a function which is defined inside a program okay it's called as a procedure there's a separate name for it all these are just subroutines and functions okay which are defined outside the program okay but those functions and subroutines which are defined inside the program they have a specific name and they are sometimes called as procedures or to be a little more specific they call as internal procedures whereas subroutines and functions sometimes they can be uh, you know, collectively that are defined outside can be collectively sometimes called as you know external procedures all right now uh, that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial hope you guys understood something uh, hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be looking at uh, We'll be looking at the subroutines in a little more detail, wherein we'll be uh, assigning them a lot of job and uh, getting some, getting multiple values outside from out out, out from it. All right. Thank you guys for watching and uh, see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.